Hello friends, this is Sonu and today we will discuss about the last fat soluble vitamin that is the vitamin K. So vitamin K is also similar like the last three vitamins which I already discussed that is the vitamin A, vitamin D and vitamin E. So this vitamin is also belong to or we can say that it's also like a nutritional vitamin. So let's today let's talk about the vitamin K. So first of all that vitamin K is divided into three group or we can say three part that is the vitamin K1 also known as phylloquinone and vitamin K2 this also known as menoquinone and vitamin K3 that is the menodione. So vitamin K1 and K2 the both vitamin is a naturally synthesized within the body and plant and uh, some other animal sources. But vitamin K3 is synthetic preparation. It will not found in any plant or it will not synthesize within the body. It is like a drug, like made by synthetically or artificially, it's made by the human. So, this two is natural, we can say, natural vitamin K which is synthesized within the body or we can take by the other sources like a food so let's talk about the sources of the vitamin K first of all K1 it's present in all leafy green vegetable for example like spinach is a rich amount of the vitamin K vitamin K2 it can found in an animal source like the liver because the, as we know the storage of the mostly fat soluble vitamin is the liver so in a liver and also it's it's present within the or we can say it's synthesized within the human body that is the intestinal flora here in our body intest, intestine has a normal flora so from there it can be synthesized because the lot of bacteria that is not pathogen for example Escherichia coli which normally present in the human intestine and produce vitamins and some other component which is useful for the human body so like that uh, we can say that in, uh, in uh, human body intestinal flora uh, can also participate in the synthesis of the uh, vitamin that is the vitamin K and some other vitamin also and vitamin K3 it is a synthetic preparation so obviously synthetic preparation means it's uh, made by the human artificially like a drug so these are the sources of the vitamin K from uh, where we can get so these types of uh, source can be take as a vitamin K now we'll discuss about, uh, let's um, discuss about the chemistry. Actually, vitamin K and vitamin K, uh, vitamin K1 and vitamin K2, the both vitamin are a fat soluble. O obviously, the vitamin K also belong to the fat soluble. But little change here that vitamin K3 is a water soluble, exception. That is the synthetic preparation. So, this is the water soluble. Only vitamin K3. Why it's a water soluble? What's the reason? Behind the reason is the, due to the structural changes. So vitamin K1 and K2 have a side chain that is the isoprenoid chain, uh, chain. So these two vitamins K1, K2 has side carbon chain, side carbon chain that is isoprenoid due to this side chain it has uh, we can say it uh, belong to the fat soluble vitamin so the k1 has 20 carbon uh, 20 carbon isoprenoid chain and the k2 have 30 uh, carbon isoprenoid chain due to this region k1 and k2 is a fat soluble vitamin and this isoprenoid uh, side chain is not present in the k3 which made by the human that is a synthetic uh, vitamin K, that's why it's a water soluble vitamin. So we can say in lack of the bile can be absorbed in the body because it's a water soluble. So this uh, very basic chemistry that we should know. Now discuss about the functions of the vitamin K. First of all, as we all know that vitamin K is the huge function that is its take part in the blood coagulation so first function is the blood coagulation second it's also bone formation 
the main vitamin which take part in the bone formation that is the vitamin D that already we discussed but along with the vitamin D this uh, vitamin K also take part in the bone formation or we can say that together vitamin D and vitamin K is take part in the bone formation or in other words we can say that vitamin K is the take in a synergistic effect which stimulate the vitamin D and both can be well maintain the bone formation or bone mineralization third one that is the cell growth in a cell growth as we know that the vitamin A is the very important take part in during the cell growth but this is not significantly functions of the vitamin K but somehow it's also take part in the cell growth and the last one that it's a prevent the atherosclerosis what is the atherosclerosis that is the the fat accumulating on the artery or we can say hardening of the artery due to the deposition of the calcium and some other cholesterol substances and can lead to the blockage of the artery and decrease the blood flow ischemia can be developed a lot of problem can be developed so vitamin k also prevent the atherosclerosis how it's doing functions we will discuss step by step so first of all one thing i would like to say about the vitamin k that any calcium binding protein means any protein which bind the calcium is absolutely depend on the vitamin k means without the vitamin k or lack of the vitamin k is it not possible to calcium will bind to any protein at all how let's talk about it. so first of all let's talk that the uh, first uh, let's talk about the uh, blood coagulation that how it's perform the blood coagulation so in a uh, body fluid have the three types of body fluid that the red blood cell white blood cell and the plasma protein and in the white blood cell have two types thrombocyte and leukocyte so thrombocyte means a platelet so platelet is the major function that is that it's inhibit the hemorrhage or we can say if any if the uh, going to any bleeding so it's try to manage or try to inhibit the bleeding stop the bleeding how it's a platelet it's uh, uh, to work let's talk about like how vitamin k is uh, take part in the blood clotting so in the liver first of all let's make the liver this is the liver because the initiation of the blood coagulation it start from the liver not directly platelet will go and uh, capture the uh, blood where is the bleeding is going on before the uh, platelet some other in uh, chemical changes or we can say some other functions are start in the liver then the platelet will uh, take part in, during the blood coagulation so let's start from the liver in a liver as we know that the hepatocyte a lot of hepatocyte here and from the hepatocyte synthesize the coagulation factor or we can say that it's the post translational changes how so in the cell obviously in the cell have nucleus and in a nucleus have chromosomes and chromosomes have dna so let's talk about this is the chromosome and in the chromosome it's take part in the messenger rna so mrna and mrna further will uh, move the translation translation and after the translation will make protein protein so we can say the biosynthesis and the protein so coagulation factor it's it's it is the protein so coagulation factor is what it's the list second seven ninth tenth and also protein s and protein c what the function of protein s and protein c we'll discuss later first we'll discuss about the clotting factor x and this clotting factor is the like a protein so now we'll discuss about the let's take one protein the name is the prothrombin and how the prothrombin will uh, start the clotting factor or how to uh, perform the clotting so let's make here This is the one big hepatocyte, and here 
uh, let's talk about this is the prothrombin prothrombin so these are the protein obviously so let's this this line is the talk about this the prothrombin and as we know that the protein so it, it's an amino acid and the amino acid of amino acid has a lot of branches so one of the branches that is the name is glutamic acid this is the glutamic acid for example this is the glutamic acid this is the prothrombin this is the glutamic acid and the glutamic acid has three branches so let's write here glutamic acid has three branch or we can say three chain alpha beta and gamma so there's three chain but for the coagulation function for the coagulation cascade the perform function that is the gamma glutamic acid how the gamma glutamic acid perform the function so for example this is the obviously the uh, the prothrombin every uh, molecule have a specific structure but it is not possible to remember and we don't want or obviously we need no need to uh, memorize the structure that's why i'm just drawing as a for the simply way for the underst uh, understanding purpose so let's talk about the this is the glutamic acid and this three chain first chain is here second chain is here and third chain is here so this is the alpha this is the gamma or this is not good so let's that this is the glutamic acid and this big this is the alpha this is the gamma i mean beta and this is the gamma this gamma structure so in the gamma chain one hydroxyl group is already added naturally or we can say that the mature or uh, normal coagulation factor has in a gamma chain hydroxyl group so here is the this is the hydroxyl group one thing also uh, uh, i would like to say that before the uh, activation means we can say this uh, two uh, seven and ninth and tenth uh, clotting factor is inactive is not already activated with the, with help of the vitamin k it's activated so before the vitamin k means the vitamin k will not going to uh, take part during the coagulation it's already inactive so now it's inactive not active so these three alpha beta and uh, the, here is the add hydroxyl group always and how the hydroxyl group as i as i said that the vitamin without the vitamin k or lack of the vitamin k any protein will not bind the calcium or any calcium will not go to bind in the protein without the uh, uh, lack of the vitamin k or without vitamin k the same here that the normal coagulation factor first of all uh, let's talk about the briefly that how normal coagulation factor is this is the any coagulation factor which it and this is the also coagulation factor so the one coagulation factor let's talk about uh, this is the one coagulation factor as one hydroxyl group so for the coagulation functions for the activation of the platelets need two hydroxyl group so for the two hydroxyl group it need to the carboxylation and for the carboxylation vitamin k help so let's uh, this is the two carboxylation now the calcium will come and calcium will bind here so now the calcium will make complex this is the complex and after the make complex pro uh, platelets will this is the platelet platelet will go and stick to the this molecule and now the this is the one big molecule and will uh, go in the endothelial cell where is the bleeding is going on and try to stop the bleeding so these are the normal function that obviously the, uh, we, uh, we have uh, step by step the function every clotting factor but now i'm just uh, 
briefly uh, discussing that how the uh, whenever the any bleeding is going on how the platelet will go and stop the bleeding so the two hydroxyl group will uh, add the calcium and then after they add the calcium automatically platelet will bind because uh, oh, um, it's bind the phospholipid so platelet membrane have made by the phospholipid so phospholipid will go and struck this molecule and then it will go in the um, injury area bleeding area and try to stop now we'll discuss that how the uh, during the carboxylation the one hydroxyl group will make the two uh, uh, add the one more hydroxyl group and then to start the function so now the one hydroxyl group so obviously for the calcium binding it need one more hydroxyl group and the help of the vitamin k it will make one more how let's talk about so these are the glutamic acid now this is the enzyme so carboxylation means what carboxylation means add the oxygen uh, or the add the carbon dioxide and oxygen and some other uh, molecule so let's here the carboxylation is going on carboxylation so need co2 and also oxygen and here the specific enzyme that is the gamma glutamyl carboxylase carboxylase this enzyme by the help of this enzyme now make gamma carboxy glutamate carbo gamma carboxy glutamate and before the reactions it was glutamic acid glutamic acid also we can say glue shortcut way and the gamma carboxylic glutamate can be say gla that is the shortcut name gla so now by help of the this enzyme gamma glutamyl carboxylase and uh, obviously during the carboxyl need co2 and o2 so this is the chemistry So now the it's make gamma carboxy glutamate, but vitamin K how here the perform the vitamin K actually vitamin K is stimulate this enzyme. So now the vitamin K is stimulate this enzyme. So and this enzyme is uh, uh, absolutely depend on the vitamin K. If vitamin K will not stimulate this enzyme will not uh, do any work and it will not do any work. So this hydroxyl group will not make another hydroxyl group and or we can say the glutam, uh, glutamic acid will not convert into alpha carboxylic glutamate and without the sorry gamma carboxy glutamate and without the gamma carboxyl uh, carboxy glutamate the cl uh, clotting factor will already uh, absolutely inactive it will not active why because calcium will not come and it will not bind and without the binding calcium platelet will not aggregate and it will not make complex so Mm, it's not performed any functions that's why it should be uh, or rather it have to convert in the gamma carboxy glutamate to bind the calcium and to bind the platelets so here we, uh, mainly the specific a specific form of the vitamin k will uh, uh, stimulate the this enzyme and this vitamin k is the natho sorry hydro hydroquinone sorry hydroquinone this is a special form of vitamin k and only this form of the vitamin k will stimulate this enzyme so here the it's going on the reactions from the uh, gamma uh, glutamyl carboxylase and along with this reactions also the uh, vitamin k is convert in the vitamin k epoxide epoxide or we can say 2 3 epoxide 2 3 epoxide and then the 2 3 or vitamin k epoxide again it have to return otherwise this reaction will stop 
and we don't want to uh, stop this reaction because again and again vitamin K uh, is stimulate this enzyme and then the the glutamic acid will further uh, converting the gamma carboxyglutamate for the further uh, function of the coagulation factor. So again it will go in the same way to the hydroquinone. So here the one enzyme is helping that is the 2,3 epoxide reductase. reductase. So by the help of this enzyme, this vitamin K will again will uh, move on the new uh, stimulation of the this enzyme to further again will convert to the gamma carboxyglutamate. So this reaction will always moving on whenever need to the coagulation factor. So this reaction is here uh, helping or here is uh, going on for the coagulation factor. The same reactions is also going on in other um, part for example in a bone formation obviously in a bone formation will not help in a coagulation factor it will have a uh, help in the osteoblast stimulation which our uh, which make the our bone more stronger and formation of new bone so on there also in a bone formation it will bind to the uh, osteocalcin that is a bone cell and will again this function will move again the here is the glutamic acid on the bone, uh, in, in bone cases, here is the osteocalcin and then osteocalcin will further stimulate the this enzyme and then uh, I mean another enzyme which is not the uh, gamma glutamic acid because here the gl glutamine that's where the gamma glutamyl carboxylase. Uh, on that case the other enzyme and this enzyme again will uh, gamma like here the gamma carboxyglutamate. So on in the bone cases different types of molecule will generate and that molecule bind to a calcium and then start to work the same way that's why we can that's why vitamin k uh, as i said that any calcium which bind to the protein without vitamin k it will not possible to bind that's why it's calcium binding protein is dependent upon the vitamin k <coughs> due to this reason so now we'll discuss about that another function that how the it take part in a bone formation of, uh, already I said that osteocalcin this is the cell so again vitamin K as I said that the same reactions just the molecule is different but the reaction is the same so osteocalcin it is the it form its form by osteoblast 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 what is the osteoblast osteoblast is the make the um, bone become more stronger it try to make new bones so the vitamin k will help you know osteoblast to bend become uh, bone become more stronger and also vitamin K is prevent osteoclast osteoclast because osteoclast is what it's eat the bone and release the calcium in the blood whenever the uh, um, calcium level in the plasma plasma protein is decreased so and it's not for the good for the bone because if the osteoclast will more stimulation more stimulation so bone become very soft and bone become very uh, weaker that's why vitamin K also it prevent the osteoclasts and stimulate the by the help of osteocalcin cell uh, to form osteoblasts and uh, bone become uh, stronger then in a cell growth as I said that's not significant effect but somehow it's uh, take part like the vitamin A or we can stimulate the vitamin A uh, and need uh, need for the or we can say try to help to the cell growth Next one that prevent the atherosclerosis. How it's prevent the atherosclerosis? During the synthesis, as I said, that's along with the coagulation factor, it's also synthesis protein C and protein S. So protein C and S. A 
actually this two protein will express the endothelial cell in the vasculature like the any types of smooth muscles which present on the arteries mainly in the vessels so it express that that vessels smooth muscle endothelial cell and try to prevent the calcification or we can say deposit of the calcium so it's this protein is prevent of deposition deposition of uh, protein c and also matrix matrix gla the two types of protein which prevent the deposition of calcium deposition of the calcium in vasculature vasculature and also it take part in the inflammation inflammation and apoptosis apoptosis and also it has anticoagulation property anticoagulation property actually matrix gla that is the protein actually ma matrix gla is the mainly prevent the deposition of the calcium and the protein c and s also it's prevent to the deposition but is the main function the during the inflammation and the apoptosis process and during the it had also anticoagulation protein process means we can say in one side that vitamin k is take part in during the coagulation where the need really the coagulation for prevent the bleeding but in other side in also it take part as a anticoagulation for example that uh, in a normal vessels so let's talk about that this is the normal vessels and, and here is the no any problem no any bleeding is uh, is there but that's why anticoagulation process not significantly like the coagulation means it will just try to inhibit or try to prevent to any uh, aggregation in any blood cells that's why it has very slightly effect uh, of the anticoagulation property so in a normal blood vessels where there's no any bleeding is going on 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 the on that vessels on that area will not aggregate or will not uh, accumulate any platelets because if if in a normal vessels will uh, accumulate in a plat uh, platelets so it will very harmful and it will not good for the health and not good for the uh, blood vessels that way it has also anticoagulation properties this is the we can say vitamin k physiological function so already discuss about the blood coagulations already discuss about the bone form uh, like the hoids or perform in a bone formations or bone mineralizations protein c and s and matrix gla that it can how it's uh, uh, maintain the or prevent the atherosclerosis you can you can understand that it's a uh, decrease the deposition of the calcium and uh, mineralization of the calcium in the vasculature that can obviously prevent the atherosclerosis because in atherosclerosis the same thing it's a uh, ca calcium deposit and uh, hardening of the arteries can lead to uh, we can say ischemia because blood flow will not uh go properly so now we'll discuss about that deficiency of the vitamin k how it can lead to the deficiency usually vitamin k uh will not uh, we can say in adult adult persons will not suffer vitamin k deficiency if they have normal functions because it fat soluble vitamin so about the absorption uh, and uh, how it will be go in a liver the same thing like vitamin k vitamin a and vitamin e so from the diet from that it take so in the intestine let's talk about very briefly intestine by the help of lipoprotein that is the chylomicron 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 will go in a liver and then from the liver it will go everywhere where the need so the same thing all fat soluble vitamin but one thing you have to remember that if you compare to vitamin a and vitamin d which one is the most a storage of the storage point 
so vitamin a and vitamin d is the well storage but if you compare to vitamin k it is less less uh, storage of the um, vitamin in the liver and other body vitamin k will store mainly in the liver in some amount of the spleen and some amount of the skeletal muscles but mainly in the liver so for example if any person is suffering from vitamin a deficiency vitamin d deficiency vitamin e deficiency uh, deficiency and vitamin k deficiency so for example from the now they stop taking the any fat soluble vitamin so maybe after one week after one week the vitamin k symptom will appear but vitamin k even in two days even in two days it will be appear that's why uh, we can say that vitamin k is very less amount of storage storage point so this information also important to know that vitamin k is the more less uh, storage vitamin so uh, high risk of the problem will develop very fastly if the that any person will taking vitamin k is the very slowly amount or it will stop now we we'll discuss about that deficiency of the vitamin k as i said that deficiency mainly lead to due to the lack of the bile due to the any cystic fibrosis any I mean, celiac disease or any disease to prevent to the or stop the uh, fat emulsification can lead to the vitamin k uh, deficiency and along with the or apart from the vitamin k all fat soluble vitamin can also uh, lack of the or we can say lack of the all fat soluble vitamin and other fat uh, molecule which which is absorbed by the bile or absorbed by the intestine or any absorbed by the calomicron that's why this information you have to remember that all fat soluble vitamin and other fat substance the same problem now let's talk about that what could be the deficiency from the function you can understand that the first is the, that is the bleeding 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 means a spontaneous bleeding can lead to if the severely deficiency of the vitamin k means can be mucosal bleeding the mucosal bleeding means the patches types of the appearance means the in a skin we can say the patches types of appearance in a soft uh, tissue like the lips and the tongues and other mucous mucous membrane the red redness and patches uh, bleeding that that is called the spontaneous bleeding next one uh, it can lead to the bone uh, can be bone weakness we can say bone weakness but it's not significantly like the vitamin uh, d because vitamin d, if the lack of the vitamin d is very fastly uh, weakening of the bone but vitamin k is compared to vitamin d and vitamin k so vitamin k if they will take lack of the vitamin k is one month so we can say vitamin d in a in a 15 days can uh, appear to the bone weakness but vitamin k will take one month so just like that uh, we can differentiate the vitamin d and vitamin k now second one like this also belong to the bleeding so in during the adult person female during the menstrual menstrual cycle period menstrual cycle period very heavy bleeding heavy bleeding can lead to uh, lack of the vitamin k can lead to heavy bleeding during the menstrual cycle period and even in a minor injury in a very short injury or very minor injury can be high bleeding can be developed because vitamin k is deficient so just for in nutshell we can say that all types of bleeding can be increased it can be small it can be major if major it will become too major if if it is a small bleeding even in a small bleeding can be lead to the major because the vitamin k deficiency now will very important that is the newborn 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 baby is depend upon the diet they depend upon the just mother milks and as we know that the very lack amount of the mother milk have vitamin k so and 
सेकेंड थिंग दैट विटामिन के टू ऑल्सो प्रोड्यूस फ्रॉम द इंटेस्टनल फ्लोरा बट इन बेबी हैव नो वेरी सिग्निफिकेंटली अमाउंट ऑफ ग्रोथ ऑफ द नॉर्मल फ्लोरा दैट्स वाई दे ऑल्सो लेक ऑफ सिंथेसिस ऑफ द नॉर्मल विटामिन नॉर्मल विटामिन के विच सिंथेसाइज इन विद इन द इंटेस्टाइन बाय द बैक्टीरिया दैट्स वाई इन द न्यू बॉर्न वेरी हाई रिस्क ऑफ द लीड टू विटामिन के डिफिशेंसी दैट्स वाई एंड ऑल्सो विटामिन के इज नॉट good penetrable of the placenta during the pregnant lady due to this this all reasons directly lead to the deficiency of the vitamin k in the newborn that's why in a newborn very high risk of uh, to the bleeding to the ha any hemorrhages any spontaneous bleeding that's why in a newborn need to the supplement give to the supplement uh, vitamin uh, let's uh, discuss about now about the uh, the as indication and the normal amount of the vitamin k uh, which uh, normal amount of vitamin k uh, how much that have to take and one thing also uh, i would like to mention that as i said that the deficiency of the vitamin k it can lead to the first any fat soluble fat emulsification problem like lack of bile steatorrhea cystic fibrosis celiac disease or calon problem along with this can also lead to the uh, vitamin k deficiency drug like non steroid anti inflammatory drug any all types of antibiotic if this all are high doses can inhibit or can destroy the intestinal flora and lead to the uh, vitamin k deficiency because the vitamin k deficiency also synthesized in the inter intestine flora that's why this thing also you, you should know so the we can say normal range normal range is for the baby approximately 60 to 70 microgram ah uh, sorry mg and for the adult person approximately 140 to 150 mg but it can be increase or decrease approximately this uh, can be less this but in baby who suffer from vitamin k deficiency on the time the baby cannot eat any leaf green vegetable they cannot eat any animal sources and even the intestinal flora will not synthesize well on the time what we should do first of all as i said that k3 is a synthetic uh, preparation vitamin k and also it's fat uh, water soluble so the big benefit that in a normal baby has already lack of the bile so fat soluble will not emulsify not absorb like the adult people that's why in the water soluble no need to any other uh, means no need to any bile and no need to any calomacron for the transportation of the fat so that's why vitamin k3 that is the menodione can be give to the baby who suffer from lack of the vitamin k or deficiency of the vitamin k so in the newborn baby newborn baby newborn baby can we give vitamin k3 it can be by the oral form and injection form but oral form is not well active or well uh, efficacy so that's why give injection form injection form can we give and can be save the baby life to further any bleeding and any spontaneous hemorrhages now we'll discuss about the very briefly toxication of the vitamin k usually the toxication will not see in a very open, uh, very openly but we should know hyper vitaminosis first hyper vitaminosis what can be lead to to red blood cell destruction as we know that the red blood cell the layer of the red blood cell the glutathione to maintain the shape of the red blood cell and to maintain to destroy so it's interrupt the uh, beta hyperbitaminosis of the vitamin k it's interrupt the glu glutathione and can lead to the we can say hemolytic anemia hemolytic anemia hemolytic anemia and due to the hemolytic anemia obviously blood will rupture and will move the 
in a blood the normal hemoglobin and can lead to the jaundice jaundice so this two is the uh, main hyperbutaminosis toxic and some other problem can be also lead to that due to the heavy coagulations can lead to thrombosis can be occur hardening of the uh, we can say uh, accumulation of the calciums in different types of the muscles can be accumulate and can lead to the di different types of problem but the, this is the main uh, problem and let's talk about now that how we will treat or what is the antidote antidote the first antidote that is a heparin heparin is an anticoagulation factor second one warfarin and the third one is the salicylate and the dicumulone di dicumulone actually these four uh, we can say drug or the four molecule it can be antagonized of the hyperbutaminosis hyper of the vitamin K heparin will directly uh, inhibit the prothrombin but warfarin and the uh, salicyclate and dicumarol these are actually inhibit the 2,3 epoxide reductase or vitamin K epoxide reductase which, which I uh, discussed in the starting of the uh, discussion that how the vitamin K will take part in the, during the enzyme uh, let's talk about very briefly about this thing that So this is the glutamic acid. Let's talk about the glue and there the enzyme gamma. Glutamyl carboxylase. So vitamin K will take part here uh, during the stimulation. Two, three epoxide and then again for the further uh, this cycle that is the 2,3 epoxide reductase so this enzyme this this drug is inhibit this enzyme and if the this enzyme will inhibit this reaction this cycle will not occur and then if this cycle will not occur this enzyme will not stimulate because and as we know that this enzyme will dependent on the vitamin K. If vitamin K will not stimulate, this enzyme will not work. And then gamma carboxy gluta, glutamate will not form. So obviously if the toxic of the vitamin K, it will not form, the calcium will not bind and platelet will not activate. So the same thing, if coagulation will too much in the body, so it will start to now less coagulation because we already gave, we already uh, inhibit this enzyme. So this is all information about the vitamin K that really we should know. So hope you will like uh, vitamin K. In the next time we will start the water soluble vitamin. So till then take care and thanks.